Okay, so we're five weeks out at this point, right? Yes, five weeks from this Saturday we will be stepping on stage oh, at the Naturally Fit Games in Austin, Texas, 2017. Yes, and at this stage of prep, we are, well, I am dieting much harder. I mean, it's been very gradual. So after my last pregnancy, I was eating about 2,500 calories. I'm now eating about 1,200 that I'm tracking. I don't track things like cucumbers and tomatoes and everything, so it's probably more like 1,300. So anyway, there's been a substantial decrease, but it's been very gradual. This has been over like 10 months or so, and the majority has been very recently in the past couple months because I wanted to be able to gain as much muscle as possible. And now I have still a significant portion of fat to lose for the competition, so I'm dieting harder. Still, you know, not like most competitors would, certainly. Exactly. Our carb carbohydrates are still bearably high. We're both at basically the bottom of where our diet is going to go. Um, not at all a fan of last-ditch efforts, not at all a fan of crash dieting because oftentimes it causes more harm than good. Yeah, we're always thinking about, you know, long-term health and longevity, so we're not thinking about that five minutes on stage. We're thinking about where do we go after the competition? How can we maintain a healthy body composition year round? And, you know, always thinking about longevity and health in the. Yeah, I mean. And you have to keep those in mind, otherwise, your career is going to be very short lived as an athlete, and you're just not going to get the most out of this experience. It's going to be miserable. So, we're five weeks out, and it may seem like a very early time to have our diet all the way bottomed out, but our cardio input right now is still very low, so we have that to progress as things go as needed. And also, um, keep in mind, if you've done this before, if you're familiar with the terms, the final week before a contest is what's called peak week. And that's where you scale your exercise way back, you increase your food a bit, and you let your body rest and recover so that you look full, strong, vital on stage, not depleted and exhausted. So if you consider peak week as a starting point, we're actually four weeks away. And so it makes sense to be pushing hard now rather than getting to the point where our contest is 14 days away and we've got a lot of work left to do. Yeah, there's never like a one-size-fits-all formula. It's going to depend on you, what you need to do, what your life is like. For me, I decided to go ahead and bottom out of my diet now because I don't have time for cardio right now. I have, you know, we run our business. I work as a doctoral assistant. I'm a full-time PhD student. We have two small kids. I don't have time to fit in a lot of cardio, so most of what I find myself doing is a Tabata set with two children staring at me, and then I'll do another Tabata set, and then maybe I'll run for 15 minutes later, but it's little increments, it's not a lot of cardio, um, and so once the semester is over, I have, that's in about a week, I'm going to start doing more cardio. So I decided to diet first, and then gradually ramp up the cardio, it could have been the other way around, you know, it really depends on your life and what's happening with you, what you know you can reasonably take on. Yeah, I mean the perfect formula is always going to be a pretty even mix of both. Um, but you have to tailor it to your lifestyle because the most perfect formula is the one you can actually adhere to mm -hmm. and be successful with. So that's something you always. Awesome. Dave's camera stopped working, so. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to. <laughs> he wants to apologize for his pressure. Yeah, something about the lighting in this cafe in particular. Don't trust it. It's not actually true. So, anyway. We're grinding coffee. Yeah, well, what we were talking about a second ago was adherence. Um, what makes it easier to adhere to the diet or whatever it is you're doing to reach your goal in the long term. So we're actually at a bakery that has a ton of vegan stuff right now. That's one of the ways that we manage with our diet. So one of the things we always focus on, we do a kind of an if it fits your macros diet in, in that we macro track and we have daily macro targets. But it's 95% whole foods plant-based. It's whole foods plant-based. So we very much believe in... Um, uh, we very much believe that whole plant foods are going to maximize your health, maximize your performance, maximize your results in something like this diet, this contest prep, anything that you're doing, physical, mental, long-term health, any of that. Um, but it has to be sustainable and it has to be enjoyable. So the way to get in treats and restaurant food and socialization and still stay on your diet and still be able to achieve your goals without any stress and without any you know, negative feelings towards food or negative food relationships is to just tailor it into your caloric budget. So what we do is basically a 90-10, 90% whole food plant based, 10% not so much, um, or 95-5, somewhere in there. <laughs> 
So, and that way we can plan in. Like, for example, a really rough estimate is if I'm eating 3,000 calories a day, that means I get 150 to 300 calories a day that can be something like a piece of chocolate. Or Marcel and I are going to split this delicious looking tofu based Mexican chocolate pie. We're going to enjoy the heck out of it. Even though we're deep in a diet, we're not eating any calories. Yeah. So we're enjoying the experience, but like you said, we're splitting it. We're not exactly. going crazy yeah. here. We're each having half of a pie, we're savoring it, we're enjoying it. And that really helps during the week. I think of the fact that some stuff like this is coming. And it helps keep me from slipping up in my diet. It helps make me feel good about what I'm doing. I don't feel restricted. Um, to be honest, I feel better when I'm eating less calories like I am right now because I feel like if I'm eating a lot of calories, I can fit in more crap. 10% of more calories is, you know, more crap that I don't need, that I don't need to be eating. I just know when I'm dieting like I am right now, I'm very cognizant of the fact that I have limited calories and most of it needs to be nutritious. Yeah. So I eat less of stuff like this. And that's something everyone needs to keep in mind and that's exactly why we do not crack the really fibrous calories like green vegetables and tomatoes, cucumbers, things like that is because so essentially, the lower your calories get, the more you really need to focus on cal or nutrient dense food. Uh, because you're not getting as much total food, which means you're not getting as much, if you're eating the exact same things as less, you're going to be getting less fiber, less vitamins, minerals, all those things. So we really go heavy on the green vegetables, things like that, that we're not tracking. Our salads every day for lunch are massive mixing bowls with every kind of low calorie veggie topping you can think of. You know, onions, tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, all that stuff. Um, and so things like this are a very small portion of our diet. So just a quick um, update on what we're doing and how we're doing it. Uh, hopefully we'll film a video posing practice and that sort of thing in the near future. So thanks for joining us. Exactly. Stay tuned. Bye.